Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and with no sneak peek in sight, the train to watch Mojo Station keeps on rolling. So you are now plugged into the top 10 best speed characters in Marvel Future Fight right now. And yes, before you ask, I will be doing follow-up videos over the course of the week with the top 10 blast, top 10 combat, and top 10 universal types. We haven't done this video in a long time, so let's get into it. And no, unfortunately, Spider-Man is not part of the top 10. This is the second time in a row, not in a row, but the second time in, in a few days that I start the video off with Spider-Man. I am doing it on purpose for those of you wondering, and I do hope, I do hope that this video will be made invalid in the next month or so when Spider-Man No Way Home comes out, uh, the movie comes out, and then the, the, the update comes out next year, early next year for the January update, uh, and then Spider-Man becomes a god in Marvel Future Fight. Also, before we get started with the top 10 list, as much as I want to hear your picks, for the top 10 speed characters. I'm a little bit more curious about this. So drop a comment down below, like the video, and then drop a comment down below, uh, because if you like, if you don't like the video, but you drop a comment, I can't see the comment. I can only see the comment if you like the video first. Um, <laughs> leave a comment with your ideas for what kind of artifact Spider-Man could get in Marvel Future Fight to make him stronger. I don't want the devs to base Spider-Man's power on his artifact, like he should be useful without it. But what sort of what sort of extra power, right, extra bit of oomph could he get uh, to really make him that much more special? But I do hope he gets a, st uh, a sterling, dazzling uh, rework because he honestly deserves it. Um, he's been out of the meta for far too long. Now, these top 10 characters are in the meta, eh? starting us off with number 10, Mystique. Now, my list is going to be a little bit controversial, I think, but I do think Mystique... Huh, is the 10th best speed type mainly because she is for earlier game for earlier like account characters she is a solid villain and a solid super villain villain same thing uh, also she's a solid speed type so speed and villain and mutant so she fills a lot of niche categories in combination you know female speed villain mutant and even once you've replaced her with better speed villains like Corvus or possibly Bullseye, she's still good because of her passive ability, the perfect deception uh, buff, passive buff that makes her a great support type. So that's why I chose her at number 10. For those of you wondering, Bullseye is not on my list at all. I know that he is somewhat meta for, well, he is meta for squad battle Vibranium and he's somewhat meta for ABX, but I just don't think that that warrants enough value and I personally think that Mystique and the rest of the nine characters ahead of him are all better because of the totality of their uh, buffs that they bring to the table, the, to the totality of their value, right? Bullseye is really only going to do those two things for you and basically nothing else. Also, you know, Mystique is a support for multiple days of ABX on top of everything else that I mentioned. So coming in at number nine, I actually have Silk. And Silk would be higher on this list if I was just going purely based on how powerful they are for PvE, because Silk is, with this uniform only, exclusively with the Summer Days uniform, Silk is very, very strong. She may be better than Rogue, who is also on this list. She gets crazy passive buffs, she gets crazy damage on her skills, and she gets a crazy ice cream chuck that she throws at you, which is hilarious. However, I dock points off of Silk because of how exclusive she is. You can only get her uniform for about a week, once a year and that for me is really what's going to uh, reduce her value again it you know into purely in terms of damage if i was just talking about the damage and the pve value silk would be much higher silk would be in the top five but because of the fact that the uniform is only available once a year and it's you know there's so many things that could happen and you just can't pick up the uniform for whatever reason i'm not even talking about the cost of the uniform i'm just talking about how difficult it is to get and if you missed it, you got to wait a whole year to get it again. That really doesn't help anyone. So yeah, that's sort of where she lands on my ranking. At number eight, we have Wave. And although Wave is basically the opposite of Silk in the sense that she's not very good at all, even fully maxed out for PvE content, like her damage is just not anywhere near acceptable. She is a very powerful leadership and support. Now, she does need her newest uniform in order to take advantage of both of those things, as do basically all characters on this list. But the leadership with a 25% all attack, 
RIP to Namor because, you know, no one uses her lead for Namor. On top of the Wrath of the Waves passive is just too good to pass up. And because she gives a 25% all attack to all allies, regardless of their typing, regardless of their faction, heroes or villains, she's an extremely flexible support type that you can use in basically all content, right? Squad battle, ABX, world boss ultimate, world boss legend, etc. She has also the flexibility of being able to cancel with paralysis, paralysis and silence on this ability so she really does do a lot and has a lot of utility for your roster uh, as a speed type who basically just plays that leadership support role nothing else at number seven is a character that does something different daredevil and he's one of the only remaining pvp threats in this speed category now for those of you wondering before we continue with daredevil why did i choose speed first for the top tens because it's the most boring list speed types are now the weakest typing which is not the biggest surprise it usually flip flops between combat and speed but generally speaking when blast types get really strong especially in pvp we use speed types to check those blast types that hasn't really happened so although daredevil maintains his value because of the defender's synergies and because of his amazing third skill sensory focus he just doesn't have enough characters to check because Jean Grey is basically the only blast type that anyone is willing to use outside of Cersei in PvP. And Cersei has her difficulties and her only her, her own sticky web situation with the revive artifact. So Daredevil will continue to see use as a massive PvP threat to blast types. His PvE value is not quite as good, despite having the 70% ignore dodge, which we thought was going to be so meta for Null and didn't end up being. But he's decent. And his AoE and his high all defense down, I believe it's 60%, yeah, makes him a surprisingly good threat for dispatch. So keep that in mind, and that is definitely why he comes in at number 7 on this list. At number 6, we have another speed type who recently got an upgrade this year, Corvus, and he vaults to the top of the speed villain category. It is a small category of characters, but simultaneously over the last year or year and a half since March of last year, we've seen so much turnover in the best characters. We saw Mystique, then we saw Bullseye, now we saw Corvus. And I think there's one other character in between there that I'm missing, uh, Gwenum perhaps. There's just been so many uh, come through recently uh, that it really does uh, put things into perspective when you get someone like Corvus who puts everybody else down. Every, every other speed villain takes a seat when Corvus stands up because he's just that good and it sort of makes sense right the black order they're so powerful uh, and corvus's power extends beyond pve he has pvp value with his revive and with the synergy that he has with the other members of the black order and there's nothing more annoying than killing corvus realizing that he's not dead seeing his glaive wave around and then he comes back and he hits you with loyal strike and then he wipes your team and that's how a lot of uh, battle world matches go when you can use corvus there uh, and you know the, the pool of characters that you can use against him is a little bit restricted so yeah a lot of people forget that he has the revive because he's so dominant now in pve especially for things like abx and he's actually solid for world boss uh, legend not only versus mephisto because of the typing but also versus null uh, it's just that a lot of people run him with a rage for abx but with an energy he's solid he's got a really easy five cancel four rotation huge aoe healing he really has the full package um, and he's a well-rounded character that you can build for almost any game mode, and you can have a solid, solid addition to your roster. At number five is the other controversial pick here. We have White Fox. Now, I know that I said that Silk is only ninth because her uniform is seasonal, and yes, White Fox's Lifestyle Series 2 is also seasonal. It's December, it's Christmas, so it's, it's coming soon. However, the difference here is without that uniform, so if you downgrade her, to either this one or Lifestyle Series 1, she is still an above average support. She still gives allies with the leadership ability 10% attack, fear uh, immunity, and these crazy buffs. So she still has that value. Does her value double or triple with Lifestyle Series 2 because of the chain hit damage that she gives to all allies regardless and the ignore dodge? Yes, but she still maintains her abilities and she still maintains somewhat of a leadership although i believe it is less it's only 24 percent no diva effects by 40 percent so yeah she maintains you know i would say 60 to 70 percent of her value even if you don't have her seasonal uniform so that's the first big difference between her and silk whereas silk has no value without her uniform white fox retains some of her value but let me not go too far with that value because outside of being a leadership slash support 
there is no other value for white fox her damage is really not there at all even with a tier three instead of a transcendence kumiho moon doesn't do any damage she doesn't do any damage even with the crazy accumulation and everything else she just doesn't do enough damage so she's only a support slash lead and mostly i would say i would focus on the support tag so why is she in fifth place because of how insane her buffs are not only have we seen a massive increase in the characters in, in the, the amount of strong characters we have that have the leadership ability you know we've always had cable we've always had captain america sharon rogers luna snow more recently we got six eternals three of which are extremely meta for pve content cersei thena and makari so the, just the amount of value that white fox brings to your roster if you have those other characters is unparalleled there really is not a better support in the game nick fury doesn't even come close in his current form so i really got to give it up to that and basically give it up to the fact that if you really want to climb in this game at high levels world boss ultimate world boss legend you use those leadership characters you use white fox and it's like putting a, a shotgun on a chainsaw or vice versa you just have like you know death supreme coming in at number four our other lone mutant rogue the only other mutant on this list and rightfully so rogue is one of the most powerful mutants in the game now and although her value more recently has shifted you know exclusively to pve and that basically piggies off piggybacks off of what i said with daredevil there really aren't any blast types that she needs to check uh she's really good for what she does which is pve she's meta for squad battle she's solid enough for abx to give you high scores and get you those rewards if you need them and then she absolutely dunks both null and mephisto up to a pretty high level i'm talking the 20s possibly 30s if you have enough pierce on your cards and you have a good build for her she is a little bit held back by the fact that she needs a judgment and i think that's the thing that hurts her case the most where players are really discouraged from building rogue and tier threeing her because players warn them and the the warning is fair you need this before you get that that makes sense at the same time though rogue is really really strong she's got healing she's got reflect she's got uh paralysis she's got you know accumulation she's got a really smooth combo she's got really flashy effects she really has everything you need for uh, a, D a dps character that's going to you know last you a long time and basically just be tanky 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 and so we make it to the top three starting off with captain america sam wilson and when he first came out he was insane he was god dps crushing content insane accumulation really flashy rotation you know really create uh frenzy buff and then just bonkers one of the best tier three skills we've ever seen with heroes rise just crazy damage and then he sort of fell out of the spotlight for whatever reason maybe it was luna snow maybe it was makari but i think people forgot about captain america falcon and forgot how dominant he is i also think he has a little bit more of a wonky play style with the passive ability defenders increase where you want to dodge and you want to dodge basically an ability like a, a toxic cloud or a tornado because those are just regular easy dodge attacks to trigger his passive i think that is what maybe turns people off he has a little bit of a unique play style and he can he can sort of get away from you at times with his three cancel four cancel or four cancel three cancel five combo it can be a little bit unruly but when you get it to work with captain america falcon there are very few characters not just speed types there are very few characters that can keep up with his dps and before makari and luna he was the og leadership character really carrying my account and many other accounts through the trenches whether it was world boss legend stage one or world boss legend stage 40. he was there and he was absolutely and still is crushing it and so we come to number two luna snow the former reigning mvp of the speed class dethroned after years of being on top and just being straight up a pve queen the thing with luna now more than ever is you know exactly what you're going to get especially when you have the light serious armor you're going to get a simple to play character that is only going to be good for you in pve content don't you dare bring her into pvp however that one thing she does she does very very well whether you give her a rage whether you give her a judgment she is going to dominate squad battle abx world boss ultimate world boss legend there's no content that she basically can't do she has crazy aoe to get through all types of different content and do all types of different things uh she's got crazy healing now she has you know multiple effects on her she basically had no effects before but now she has cold resistance decrease she's got the guard hit more more healing more freeze 
you know, she has a little bit more now. She's still kind of lacking in that in the, in the, the buffs department, and you sort of surround her with characters that are going to buff her to, to build that up, whether it's Heimdall striking or it's Nick Fury lead. But yeah, Luna basically just hasn't really changed much besides her rotation uh, recently with the new uniform. But what she does, she still does very, very well. And if it weren't for the MCU movie Eternals, Luna would be number one on this list. And really, it's not that Luna's gotten worse. It's really not that Luna's gotten worse. It's just that our number one is that much better. Makari is hands down the best speed character in the game. And she's one of the best characters, period, in the game. Insane healing, super buttery smooth rotation, amazing animations. Like some of the coolest animations really makes you feel like you're playing a speedster, even more so than Quicksilver, which I didn't think the devs could do. She's got everything. She's got accumulation. She's got damage procs. She's got buff remo uh, debuff removal. She's got paralysis, like she incapacitation, fracture. She's got everything. She's got speed. She literally has Barry Allen's speed force. All right. I know it's just the name of the skill, but she is really too cool for school. And extreme speed makes sense, fits perfectly. And the crazy thing is about Makari, she can work with more, more so than I think any other character on this list. She works with an energy. She works with a rage. She works with a proc so she would probably work with a muddy destruction as well so flexible so powerful and so strong really you know you cannot go wrong and i'm ranked one two three and it makes it makes total sense you cannot go wrong honestly you should have this you should uh save up she's the best uh crystal deluxe pack character and uh like i said she's probably top five uh for any character right now in any kind of pve content because she just murders the competition uh in very quick style so yeah hit me up in the comments down below let me know what you think of my top 10 speed characters list and hit me up in the comments with your top 10 as well as that thing i asked you at the beginning did you forget the spider-man artifact thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one take care